Hey guys! If you've never met me, my name is Kinsey, and I'm a senior this year, which means it's my last year at Snow Camp, which is so crazy. Um, and tonight I have the opportunity to talk to you guys about some things that are really important to me and that I think could change your life. Have you ever noticed how easy it is to become obsessed with something? I think all of us have had these moments in our lives, whether it's a sport, a person, a place, or a thing, where we become so obsessed with something that it almost becomes part of our personality. Um, one time that this happened to me was in elementary school. Has anyone ever asked you the question, like, if you were stranded on a desert island and you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? In elementary school, this is a really big thing for me, so I looked up what food you could live the longest on only eating that food. And I don't even know if this is true, but the first thing that came up was sweet potatoes. And from then on, fourth grade Kinsey refused to eat anything that was not a sweet potato for like two years straight, because it must be the healthiest food if you can live the longest on it, right? And to this day, if you ask me what my favorite food is, I will say sweet potatoes, even though I fully know I brainwashed myself into liking those and I literally hated them until that day. Sometimes, however, our obsessions as human beings are a lot bigger than sweet potatoes, and they be can become part of our identity and the thing that we love the most. And sometimes this can become a bad thing, to the point where you are getting all your fulfillment, all your joy, and everything that is keeping you going from that one thing. Now, this might seem super, like a super annoying ability, but it was actually created on purpose by God. He created us with the ability to be so fully captivated in love with something because we were created to be captivated in love with and even obsessed with Jesus. We get so busy sometimes falling in love with our obsessions and pursuing other things that aren't him and putting those things on our throne that we lose sight of the God who made those things in the first place. We get so busy falling in love with the world that we forget to remember the one who created it all. Um, I wanna start our time together with a verse. This is Matthew 13, 44 through 46. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. And then he tells another story. He says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold everything he had and bought it. Now, I know this sounds like so crazy and extreme. Um, first, I wanna explain, like if you've never had read a parable, if you don't know what a parable is, basically Jesus would use stories to illustrate ideas and make them easier for us to understand. And this is one of those times, like when he was preaching. Now what Jesus is saying is not sell everything you have. In some cases, Jesus does call people to sell everything that they have. But what Jesus' main point here is that we need to be completely sold out for him. We need to be completely obsessed, completely captivated, and madly in love with him. Because we were created to be. We were created to love him more than we loved anything else. Jesus is saying that the kingdom of heaven is worth being completely sold out for. One important thing that we can learn for the first guy, the guy who bought the field, is that he literally sold everything he had for something that was unseen. The field looked completely normal to everyone else. The treasure was buried. There was nothing special about that field. And yet he gave up everything he had for something he knew was of infinite value. And oftentimes, this is how Christianity is. People around you won't get it. They won't get why you literally can't shut up about Jesus, why he is such a big deal to you. But you know that he matters, and you know that you are fulfilling the purpose of your life just by loving him. Um, one thing that both of the people in those stories have in common is that they had a moment in their life where they stopped, thought about what mattered, and once they realized the one thing that mattered most to them, they decided that that thing was worth everything to them. Now, there are many endings that we will experience throughout our lives, and while the overarching is death, there are many more. For instance, like I told you guys, I'm a senior, so I'm graduating this year, which is so crazy. 
Um, and on the day that I graduate, I know that there's a lot of things that will be important to me. I know that I'll be thankful for all of my teachers. I'm a dancer. I'll be thankful for my high school dance career. Um, I'll be thankful for all the amazing friendships I made. But there are a lot of things that I've established in high school that won't be coming with me past high school. I can't bring my high school teachers to college with me, and some of my friendships just won't make it to this next part of my life. But throughout high school, one thing that I've done, I will carry with me not just past high school, not just past college, but all the way until the day that I die. Until the last breath on my last day, I am confident that the most important thing to me will always be Jesus. About a year and a half ago, um, I got to the point where there, like, I knew there had to be more to this Jesus thing than just like getting a ticket to heaven and be like, okay, sounds good, I'll just live the same way I did. Um, I grew up in the church, grew up going to church every week, um, but I was honestly always so bored of Jesus. Like I literally did not get the hype and I was so confused. But I kept obsessing over and being like so captivated by things that were not Jesus and they left me tired and dry every time. They literally left me more unfulfilled than I was before I pursued them. So I knew the way that I had been living wasn't working anymore. So I decided to give Jesus one day. I gave Jesus one day of radical obedience and I was like, just use me however you can for this one day. And then Jesus changed my whole life in one day. And for the last year and a half since, Every single day when I commit to obey Jesus, he shows me more and more how amazing he is. And I get more and more in awe of him every single day. And just one day of radical obedience, it could change your life too. I spent 16 years of my life living like Jesus was boring. And now it is literally the purpose of my life to tell people that he's not. And if that isn't proof that God exists and cares for us, then I don't know what is. Now, I want to tell you guys about my cousin, Josh. Josh is five. Do we have any soccer players in the room? Anybody play soccer? Okay, now, if you play soccer, then you know that soccer people, they're kind of a different breed, okay? <laughs> they're, they're a little different than everyone else, okay? Josh, Josh is no exception. Okay, soccer players, they're just a little different. Um, Josh loves soccer and literally talks about it all the time. It's his favorite thing. He's five and it's literally so cute when he goes on his little rants about soccer. But my aunt told me that he might not keep playing soccer for another reason, for another season. And when I asked her why, she said that it was because he like loves talking about soccer and he knows a lot about soccer and he likes the idea of soccer. But when the time came and he was on the field and he had to go get that goal or whatever you guys do, he would just like... He would just like stand there and like be like, oh wow, it's a pretty tree. Oh, it's a beautiful day out. Oh wow. And he would just like stand there. Um, and I think that this happens a lot in teenage Christianity. We know a lot about Jesus. We talk about Christianity. We claim Christianity. But when the time comes, there is no urgency to obey him. We have no urgency to lay down our lives to follow him. And if you get this, Jesus will never be boring. If you become someone that is just so captivated by him that you have to do what he says when he says it, and you know that his timing is perfect, that's when Jesus gets excited. And that's when following him becomes the obsession. It becomes the only thing worth chasing. So one important thing that we can learn from Josh, and I'm not a soccer coach, thank goodness I'm not talking to you guys about soccer right now because that would not go well. But what I would say to him if I was his soccer coach was, if you don't have a sense of urgency, you're never gonna see a victory. If you don't feel like you gotta get to that goal and you gotta get to it now, then you're never gonna see a victory. If you don't do what God says when he says it, you're never gonna have fun following Jesus. So my challenge for you guys is to remember that you're choosing something and it's taking you somewhere. You need to question if that thing will save you. Will that thing matter when you take your last breath? 
Now, I think often why we get stuck in this place without urgency is because we're scared to trust God. And one thing that really changed my life when someone told me it, someone told me that God cannot lie. And you might be like, oh, that's obvious. But when you understand that God cannot lie, he becomes so much easier to trust. Like, think about the person that you trust the most in this world. Like your best friend or one of your parents or your boyfriend or whatever. The person you trust most in this world is capable of lying to you. But Jesus isn't. He's just so good that he is perfect and he cannot lie to you. I'm going to read another verse for you guys. It's like three chapters later. It's in Matthew 16, 24 through 26, and it says this. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits its soul, his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? And what Jesus is asking you to ask yourself, that's a funny phrase, what Jesus is asking you to ask yourself today is, is there something that has become your whole world? Is there something that, whether you realize it or not, has become the thing that's keeping you going? become the center of your life and the most important thing to you. What Jesus is saying here and what we can really get out of this is that often the path to life is through death. The path to being fulfilled and feeling real joy in your life is through some things needing to move off of your throne. Some things in your life needing to die and leave the place that they have held in your life for so long. There's a few people in this room that are the type of people that would sell everything for a field that looked normal to everyone else. The people that would say, if this thing takes me one inch from you, God, then I want it miles away from me. Are you one of those people? Is tonight the night that Jesus stops being one of your things and becomes your one thing? One thing that I think is really important to remember um, and that Jesus teaches over and over in the Bible is that the wrong gain is always a loss. If you feel like you're winning, but you're also more empty inside, you need to question if you're really gaining. If you're chasing those grades and they make you feel super good about yourself for a second and then immediately you go back to chasing it, I think it's important to question if it was even a gain at all. Now, I'm not saying to stop doing your schoolwork. I'm saying to question where your identity is. What's the most important thing to you? Um, So my question for you tonight, um, we're going to go into activity in a minute, is what is one thing that is keeping you from putting Jesus at the center of your life? Um, It's September of 2022, so just like a couple months ago. Um, I'd like given Jesus so much of my life, except for one little piece of it that I was going to keep to myself, and I didn't want him to have. And in September, he was like, Kinsey, you gave me that conviction. If you know what the Holy Spirit conviction is like, you got to pay attention to it. I was like, what's up, man? And he's like, you got to give me that one area of your life. And I was like, no, thank you. (laughs) <laughs> Nothing. I'm good. So I kind of like put it off for a while. Um, and then random day in September, um, I took the steps to give that thing to Jesus. And two hours later, I got the call that I was going to be talking to you guys tonight. And that was just the beginning. You guys, the last months of my life since I have lived in complete surrender to Jesus have been so different from any month I have ever lived. And he will do the same thing for you. Now, for some of you, God is going to ask you to give up something really big, and it's going to be really scary. And for some of you, you're not going to understand why he's asking you to give that thing up. And I've been there. And one thing that I've always cling to when I get to the situation is to remember that you might not know what he is doing now, but someday you will. 
In September, I did not know why he was doing that. I did not know why he wanted me to surrender that piece of his life to me, my life to him. But now, it could not be more clear that Jesus needs my whole heart. Not just a piece of it, not all but one piece, my whole heart. Because I was created to love him. I was created to worship him. I was created to bring him glory, and I was created to surrender to him. So I want to tell you something. If you're surrendering something tonight, one important thing that you can remember is that God can do way more with one moment of your surrender than you could do in a lifetime of pursuing that thing. God can do, like, so much more before you even walk out of this room than you could do in the next 50 years of pursuing that boy, the next 100 years of pursuing that sport. Now, what you're leaving behind tonight is important, but what you're taking with you, that's the big deal. That's the important thing. Because when you surrender things to God, you have to get excited. It is going to change your whole life. It is going to change your whole world. Obedience to God changes everything. I'm so excited for what those of you who are going to give up the thing that God, that God calls you to give up. I'm so excited for how your lives are going to change over the next days, months, and years. There is one overarching purpose to our existence. And it's not to fall in love. It's not to go on fun vacations, and it's not to get into your dream college. It's to bring glory to the one who made you. It's to obey him. It's to let him move you and change your heart. So in the next few minutes, I want you guys to spend some time in prayer. Um, and maybe some of you, God has already put something on your heart that you need to surrender to him. Um, and if he hasn't yet, that's okay, because prayer is so powerful. So you can pray and ask the Lord, what is one thing that is on your throne that does not belong there? Now, I want to be really clear. If God is convicting you that your boyfriend's on your throne and he doesn't belong there, that doesn't mean you need to break up with your boyfriend. That just means he's in the wrong spot in your life. If your grades are on your throne, that doesn't mean you should never do school again. It just means that those grades are in the wrong spot in your life. If the approval of your parents is on your throne, that doesn't mean you should stop talking to your parents. It just means that it's in the wrong place in your life. There's a place in your heart that only Jesus belongs. I just want you guys to look at, look at this and like take this in. And like, take a look guys, oh my gosh. Y'all gotta be proud of yourselves for that. That's insane, I mean, that's just insane. I can't even take that in. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, man, I am so proud of you guys. Um, I am so excited of what you, for what you guys get to walk into now and all the freedom you, <laughs> all the freedom you guys get to live in. Um, just know, if you ever feel yourself kind of crawling back into this, like, you're leaving this here, and you're never going to have to be slave to that again. You're leaving this here, and it no longer has power over you. This thing never did and never will determine who you are or what you're worth. In the name of Jesus, you are free from this thing, and you will never have to feel those chains again. And so now, just as a celebration of everything you're leaving behind, but also everything you get tonight, more of the Holy Spirit, more of what you were made to do. So as we reflect on this, I just want to listen to this song. Just let those words sink into your heart of who you are and what you get to do from now on. <laughs>